to do a little recap on place value. So one of the first things we want to understand about place value is that there are two kind of center points, I guess. Um, I think a lot of us maybe look to the decimal to be the center point because you saw on one side you had tens and on the other side tenths and on one side hundreds and the other side hundredths. Um, and the decimal points seem to play a role in that. And it definitely does, but really the significance of the decimal point is that it is the delineation between whole numbers and parts, okay? Whole numbers and parts. The real center of the place value universe is ones, okay? So if we take ones as the center, then everything has symmetry, okay? Which is really nice. All numbers are built from ones, uh, groups of ones, and then the base. And so in base 10, we have, uh, once we get 10 things, we, we no longer hold on to any ones and we have one 10. We, and then if we have 10 of the tens, we no longer have any tens and we get one of the hundreds. So it's really helpful to understand another base so that we can actually see how base 10 really operates. Um, I told a story about how, you know, one fish says to the other, uh, how's the water today? And the fish says, uh, what's water? You know, if we swim in base 10 our whole lives, we may not really recognize exactly uh, the nature of it. Uh, another complicated piece uh, for elementary kids is understanding, I mean, place value has a lot to do with exponents. So um, in a kind of a weird way, anything to the zero power is one. So we have 10 to the zero, 10 to the first power, that's 10. 10 to the second power, that's 100. 10 to the third power. And this is just how bases work, okay? Um, over in the decimal area, it's a, even a little bit weirder. Uh, it's 10 to the negative one, which is really just one over 10. And this is one over uh, 10 times 10, right? This is 100th. And that's just what negative exponents are. They're fractions. So let's take a look at base five just for a sec. So base five is the same thing, except for the numbers in base five. And I have the numerals down here. We got the base 10, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's all there is. In base five, there's just zero, one, two, three, four. When we get to five, that is 10, right? Because we have at one, five, and zero, ones. So let's look at the, at the places. We have ones. We have the base, fives. We have the base squared, 25s. We have the base cubed. And here are the exponents, right? Five to the zero power, five to the first power, five to the second power, five to the third power. Now in that purple row, I wrote what they are in base 10, just so we can make sense. Because if these were just like objects, uh, sticks on the ground, right? We would say there's 125 sticks on the ground. How would we write 125 sticks? We would write it 1,000 in base five, right? Um, 20, uh, 25 is 125, zero fives, zero ones. Five is one five, zero ones, and one is just one, and one, two, three, four all look the same. Fifths are gonna look the same decimal-wise as tenths because this is, uh, there's point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, and then one whole. Um, but it's really point 0.2 right, in base 10, it's, it's one fifth, and this is what one fifth looks like, and this is one twenty-fifth, and this is one twenty-fifth in base 10. So that's kind of the overview of the buckets, right? Each one of these you can think of as a bucket, and so when you fill up one of the buckets according to the base, uh, then you get one of the next and you clear out that whole grouping. So let's take a look at some conversions. So we have nine in base 10, okay? That is nine things. In base five, that's too many for this one digit number. So we would need to go into two digits. So we would get, we would get up to four and then we would get one more and we would have one, five and zero, right? We would have kind of a, a, a 10, the numeral 10, and that would mean five. And then we need four more. And so we can do that with two digits. So one, four, 14 is nine. 14 base five is nine things. All right, 12 in base 10. Now we're gonna need a couple of those fives, right? We're gonna need two of those fives and that'll take care of the 10 and then we'll need two more. So 22 base five is 12 things. 
right? Because these number systems are just representations of a certain number of the, a certain quantity. 30, now we need a whole bunch. Actually, we're gonna need more than, we can't do just fives because we would need six fives and six does not exist in base five. So we're gonna have to go to the next place value, which is 25. We're gonna get 125, one five and zero ones. So 110, 110 is 30 things, 110 base five. Now here's another way to look at this, and this is I think this is helpful too. Expanded notation. So 63 is 6 times 10 plus 3 times 1. Okay, 223 base 5 is 2 times 25 plus 2 times 5, that second digit, plus 3 times 1. 123 in expanded notation is 1. Oh, I did these backwards. Um, Good, good mistake here, right? So this is the base five one. So I'll take that out of there, put that here. And this is the base 10 one. So in base 10, the one here stands for 100. The two stands for two tens. The three stands for three ones. In base five, the one stands for 25s. The two stands for fives. And the three stands for one. So this is just a little intro into looking at what it really means to be in a base.